Now this is the Bible touchstone. And we're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 here. Last video we looked at chapter 2 verse 4. Imagine you're talking with a universalist or a pantelist, or you're just talking about the definite atonement or definite redemption in scripture, and then the universalist, or let's just say it's an Armenian, because that's sometimes the case, they're going to try to contradict some of the scripture that you appeal to, and they're going to appeal to 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10, they're going to isolate it out of context. And they're going to say, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. And they're going to claim that this verse is this universal maxim, or this doctrinal maxim, that proves that God saves all men. Of that set of all men, it is clear that God especially saves those that believe, but there's a distinction here that the set of all men also, not only does it include the set of all that believe, but also includes all those that don't believe. So regardless if you believe or don't believe, you're going to be saved. But you'll be especially saved if you believe. That's what they're going to say, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. And there probably is some merit if we just looked at this passage by itself, because especially, or Mal ista in the Greek, most often when it's used in the New Testament, it is used as chiefly or most of all or especially. Now the thing is, the definition of that word also means particularly or specially. Now I think it's probably important to, or certainly important to observe the central theme of the letter and the context of which 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 was written. We already looked at chapter 2, but we see that Paul is addressing the fact that there are false teachers out there and there are errors and heresies that were going about, and he exhorts believers, and he also um, gives some teachings on on teaching. Now, in the begin in his address in verse 15, he says that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus has come into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now, we're also going to look at the Gospel of John here, because this proposition that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners is going to resound in Scripture, and I think that's what he means in chapter 4, where he says that God is the Savior of all men. But let's continue reading. In verse 16 of chapter 1 it says, How that for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern of them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more in the next video about long suffering when we talk about Second Peter. But, I like how Young's literal translation also says this. It says, for an example to those being about to believe on him to everlasting life. So, God saved, God came to save sinners, or came to save the world, and those that would be saved, or specially saved, that is those that were going to believe still then in the future, who may have been confused then at that point or didn't believe but all are sinners and even with the example of Paul there was a time when he didn't believe but by the grace of God he was illuminated by the Holy Spirit and he was regenerated and converted and to demonstrate God's grace and he was once a sinner but counted as righteous in Christ when he came to believe. Now, I wanted to look at the Gospel of John. In, in chapter 12, it says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And I think that's what is meant when it says God will come uh, to save sinners and to save all men. He's a savior of all men. 
because all men are sinners, and those that would be specially or particularly saved are those that would believe. Because even though Christ didn't come specifically to judge in his first advent, those that rejected him or didn't believe in him, they were already judged. We see in the next verse in verse 48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Now we also see, to make this a little bit more clear, we're going to look at John chapter 3. It says in verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So those who are sinners, who God came to save, they already were condemned and had the wrath of God abiding on them. Now, the thing is, it's either that, it's either that John chapter 3 verse 18 is correct and 1st Timothy chapter 4 10 is also correct in that it is especially those that believe that will be saved or Paul is saying that God saves all men universally and that would contradict what Jesus said in John chapter 3 so what is the most apparent interpretation the most apparent interpretation is the one, the synthesis, the one that reconciles the two. Because that would preserve the integrity and the truthfulness of both passages. As always, grace be to you.